Example one says list some linear pairs and vertical angles. So we have a picture and one thing to note which we haven't seen a whole lot yet until just this section is that we actually are naming angles with numbers now. So um, and that's always a nice quick easy way not a lot of writing. Um, but again, we only do that if they have the numbers provided. So what do we know? Let's start with linear pairs. So we look at this picture. Do you see any linear pairs, Miss Hill, Gravy? Well, I see several, but then the way that they're named, I can really only name one. Okay. Like I know angle one and angle four are a linear pair because together they form a straight line, right? So that's a mm -hmm. linear pair. They're two adjacent angles whose non-common sides are opposite rays. But like if I look at three, five, and two all together... Of course that makes a straight line, or one, two, and five together make a straight line, but I really can't name those because I've got to put two things together, which I can't do. Now angle four and angle three are also another set of linear pairs. So there's Did actually... I Did I say one? Yeah. yeah. I, there are two. But there, there's other ones that I could list if they were named by vertices. Like I could put two and five together if they had the vertices. But because yeah. they name it with numbers, I can't do that. Exactly. So you're limited because of the numbering of or the name of the angles. But I like how you said that. It began pair meaning two. So one and four and three and four are right. vertical angles. All right. Vertical angles. We know on this one, looking at this, I can see one and three are vertical angles. And if we think about the idea of it's two intersecting lines, mm -hmm. there's really, that's the only set of two intersecting lines that we have there. Well, what about, what about angles three and two? Yeah, see, they're on a line, but they're not. There's a, there's an intersecting line here and an intersecting line here, yeah, right? Yeah, but one, that second uh, one that you did isn't using angle two. And this ray forms angle two. Right. And that's the same with angles four and five. They kind of look like they, they share that vertex, but notice this angle 4 is made by this line and this line, but this line that we have would be 2 and 5 together. Yeah. So you would have to combine those again. And again, vertical angles are pair. So really, those are the only two that are in this picture. Yep. All right. So for this next example, they tell us that the measure of angle 2 is 36 degrees. We're supposed to find the other angle measures. And because they've got them numbered, we need to find angle 1, the measure of angle 3, and the measure of angle 4. I got this. I can do this. You Ms. think okay. so? Okay. Yes. Go for it, Ms. Flermo. All right. So I'm thinking, first and foremost, when I look at that picture, I think what it can be helpful for anybody is that I, I look and see that there are a couple different special angle pairs. We have vertical angles which angle two is a vertical angle with angle four. So that automatically means we know by exploring this the other day that those are going to be congruent. So angle four has got to be 36 degrees as well. Okay. Um, I see that angle one and three are also vertical angles. However, right now that doesn't help me because I don't either know either one. So then I've got to think, okay, what other angle pairs do I see? I see linear pairs. Well, angle two, which was provided, is a linear pair with angle one. So that means those two added together have to add up to 180. So I could find angle one by subtracting 36 from 180 and that gets you 144. 144. Now again going back to what I just said a little bit ago since one and three are vertical angles that means angle three is congruent to angle one which makes it 144 as well. So awesome. I could use linear pairs again, but what's the point? We don't need to. Yeah. Knowing those special angle pair relationships really helps you out with these problems. And again, looking at that picture, that's going to be helpful. Ms. Hilker, we mentioned earlier that these are things that we're going to use a lot this year. All right, moving on. Example three, it says the angle, find the angle measures given the following. So this go around, we're still finding angle measures. Notice we're actually finding four because we don't know any of them. Looks but like we may have some more algebra on this problem. We know some stuff. So let me just start some labeling stuff. And, and what gives it away that we're going to do some algebra? Well, there's variables. All these variables. Mm -hmm. And I see x's and y's. So, so let's see if we can find a way to make this easy. All right. So we got 4x plus 15 for that. This is 5x plus 30. This angle 3 is 3y plus 15. And this one is 
that. Now, one thing I want to stress again is that these are pictures that are not drawn to scale. A lot of times they're drawn, we don't think about the measures when we draw them. So keep that in mind. Now, All right. as I look at this one, I'm thinking again about those special angle pairs. So what kind of special angles do you, pairs of angles do you see in this? Well, we have vertical angles. Like one and four I know are vertical angles. So those two should be congruent. But as I'm looking at that, one has an X and one has a Y. So that's really probably not the way I want to go if there's an easier way to go. Okay. Um, same thing with two and three. Those are a vertical angle pair, but one has an X, one has a Y. And I could make a system of equations and solve that system, but... Let's see if there's something easier. So thinking of some other special angle pairs, I know we also have linear pairs. And if I look at one and two, those both had the x's and those are a linear pair. So I would write an equation to state that those two add to equal 180. Excellent idea. And, I, and again, notice that she first thought of vertical angles and that's a lot of times what I do too. Linear pairs is another option. Don't forget about that. That is a lot easier to deal with because they both have X's in it. Um, another note um, is the, the labeling. Notice how these are congruent, one and four and two and three. I did different tick marks, so. All right, so if I was dealing with one and two and I know they're linear pairs, what do we know about those two angles? They add to equal 180. Add up to equal 180. So I can say angle one, which so is four X plus 15 plus the five X plus 30 should equal 180. And again, think about the fact that what we mentioned earlier, since there's variables, we're going to have to use algebra, which means we're going to have to set up an equation. So seeing that set up is an excellent idea. Um, you could have done that with angles 3 and 4 if you wanted to. Sure. And as you're solving, you would have found that x is 15 on this one. So a little bit of work, not a ton. You find x is 15. Now are you done? No, because they wanted to find all the angle measures that were given. Okay, so if we found x is 15, is there any angles that we can find right away? Sure. We know that angle 1 was 4 times our 15 plus another 15, so angle 1 would be 75. Okay, and sometimes, you guys, it might be helpful just to put that in the picture, you know, just to kind of have a visual. So that's 75. What's another angle we can find with that? Um, angle 2 we know was 5x plus 30, so 5 times our 15 plus 30 would give us 105. Now, is there a way to check so far if we did this right? Well, those two do add to equal our 180, so we know that that is a linear pair. Which means we did our algebra right. Good. Yes. <laughs> All right. On. Now, angle 3, do I really even need to find y? Well, let me go back to directions. It doesn't say find x and y. It just says find the angle measure. So, we don't really have to find y, which basically means I could use the vertical angle. These ideas over here. Yeah. So let's switch angle do you want to find next. Let's say 3. 3 is a vertical angle with 2, so it should also be 105. And angle 4 is a vertical angle with angle 1, so it should also be 75. Now, you can always set up that other equation and solve for y and substitute it in to double check yourself. So that's never a bad idea. But again, you don't, yeah. you don't need to, and, and that's fine. That's, it's always a good thing to check your work. Now, example four says given angle G is a supplement. Ooh, a supplement means that we're going to be dealing with some supplementary angles here of angle H. What does just that word supplement mean, Mrs. Palermo? That means that we have some angles, two to be exact, that add up to 180. Exactly. So angle G, the measure of angle G plus the measure of angle H should add to equal 180. Mm -hmm. Now, they tell us what G is, so to find H... Oh, just take 82 from 180. Exactly. So the measure of angle H would add to be... 98. 98. I should say subtract to be. Yeah. All right, for angle... or for. Part B, it says, given that angle U is a complement. Now, complement, we know that means two angles that add to equal? 90 degrees. Of V. So U and V are going to add to equal 90 degrees. If we know the measure of angle U, can I find the measure of angle V? Yep. Since they add up to 90, you're just going to subtract 73 from 90, mm -hmm. and you get 17. And we could write that math up here, too, and yeah. say 180 minus our 82. It does help to know where you got those answers from and that we didn't just pull them out of thin air. Showing a little bit of work is always a good thing, guys. Okay. Next, it says angle K and angle W are supplementary. So right away, I see a word. 
Hopefully you see it too. That's probably important. Supplementary. Yep. So we know they add to equal 180. So their sum is 180. Okay. We know that we got to find those two angles. So I'm going to right off to the side, just a reminder, angle K and angle W, those are my question marks. Oh, looks like we've got some algebra going here. Why is that? What gives that away? We've got those variables. All right. Since they don't know either one, but we do know what about these two angles? That together they equal 180. Okay, and together so meaning you have to add them. Add them. So we're going to add up angle K, which is 12X plus 1. Add that to angle W, which is X plus 10, and it's set equal to 180. 180 because of that keyword supplementary. So you do a little bit of your algebra. You guys are really good at this. X should equal 13. And we're not done. We already knew that because we got to find these two angles. So I substitute back in. To me, this would be easiest to substitute in. Yeah, so, so angle we know that's W. That's going to be 23. And then if we take 12 times our 13 plus 1, that should get us to 157. But I also could have just taken 180 minus the 23 to get there as well. Exactly. And, and it doesn't hurt to do both just to check. Yeah, exactly. If you are if you don't feel pretty confident in your algebra, most of you are, but even the best algebra students make mistakes here. So just uh, always double check. All right, this next example says to state whether the two angles are complementary, supplementary, or neither. Now, taking a look at this, I hope it looks like a clock. That was kind of our goal here. Yes. That it looks like a clock. And notice it, how many hours am I representing with the, or how many degrees, I should say. Yes. Am I representing with these two hands of the clock? Well, we know that in, uh, in time, every time that I make um, 15 minutes, that's really how many degrees? Well, that would be 90 degrees, right? 90 degrees. So if you want to kind of think about breaking this into what these actually are as sections, you could take 90 divided by the sections that we have here, and we could figure out degrees. Mm -hmm. um, but another thing we could do, what if I put these two hands? Right now, obviously, these two clocks are an example of non-adjacent angles. Mm -hmm. What if I put them together on the same clock? So I know that these two together, this is the four tick marks, right? Mm -hmm. So what if, and this one's only two, so what if I made them adjacent? And I said, okay, let's share this common side and just carry this down for two. Instead of worrying about the degrees for each one individually, if I put them on the same clock, it's pretty easy to see mm -hmm. how many degrees we're talking about there. What do you know if I made them adjacent? It looks like they're going to add up to 180, which means they'll be supplementary. Exactly. So sometimes it helps if they're non-adjacent to put them together as a visual, mm -hmm. if you just have a visual anyways, to be able to see what kind of angles you're talking about. Last example. Uh, angle T and angle S are supplementary. Again, important word. Um, it says the measure of T is half the measure of S. Find angle T and S. Okay, so let me go back. Angle T and S are supplementary. There's no picture. There's no picture. What does that mean, though? What does angle T and S supplementary mean? That means mean? that together they add to equal 180. Okay, let me just jot that down. So angle T and angle S are going to add up to 180. All right, let's read on. It says the measure of angle T is half the measure of angle S. Hmm. Again, what do you think? Well, they don't give us a picture, but mm -hmm. I don't know that we necessarily need a picture. We just need to maybe, we may need to think a little algebra. I'm thinking, I still have two unknowns, so if I call one of them X, mm -hmm. if I said T was X, then S could be half X, or if I call S X, T would be double that. Okay. Either way would be fine. Okay, so let me just write down this. Let me write, so angle T is half of the measure of S, so that means it's half of the measure of angle S. Just kind of jotting down that mm -hmm. idea first. And yes, you can use variables in replace of these. You can use X's, you can use T's, S's, whatever. All right, so um, which one do you want? If you want to use X, which one do you want to make X? Well, to me, it'd be easier to make S, X. So let's say angle S's measure is X. We don't know. So if I know that, then if T is half of X, or I just did that backwards. That's okay. If T is half of X, then I or half of S, then I know that uh -huh. T is going to be one half X. Now, could I have also said that T was just the X and S would have been then two X's? 
Yeah, you could do that. We yeah. can maybe show that here in a minute. So we can take this and basically replace into this equation. So angle T is 1 half X, because that's what it's saying it is. It's half of that ve 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 measure. This would be just X, because that's what we labeled it as, equals 180. Is this a solvable equation? Sure, and I could even clear that fraction. Yeah. In fact, if I multiplied everything there by 2, Notice what's going to happen. Yeah, you end up with your x and your 2x. Now, here they're going to equal the 360 Good. because of the way that we've labeled them. Yes. So. And then when you solve this, your x ends up being 120. Now, which value is that representing? That's representing the measure of angle S. And which means angle T is half of that. So angle T is 60. Now, and another way to check this is that they have to be supplementary to begin with, and those which two means they add, to add up to 180. Yeah, perfect.